What creates these trauma bonds? What are some of the reasons these trauma bonds happen? Okay, the love bomb and the devalue cycle. So a narcissist or other toxic person with a personality disorder, usually in the beginning of relationships, is a different person. What we say is they wear a mask. They are love bombing you. They are grooming you and they are conditioning you to believe certain things about them are true. I've even heard of one who said to someone I know personally that they create the person they want the new person they're meeting to believe they are because the first impression is the one that sticks. So you see, some of them know it, some of them don't. But in any case, most narcissistic people have a love bombing period in the beginning of relationships. Sometimes it's the sweeping you off your feet thing. Other times it could just be that they seem like a normal person. Okay, in the beginning, this is why when you're in new relationships after being with a toxic person, or if you've never met one and you want to stay away from them, you got to get to know people a bit. You got to get to know all the sides of a person. Okay. And narcissists will have distinct sides. They aren't going to have this in between area that most of us have. They have this fake person that they want people to believe they are, which they present during the love bombing. And then they have the devaluing, which we're getting to next. The devaluing side who is critical of everyone and we'll talk about that in a second what the love bombing does is it creates the feeling of trust right it creates the bond in the beginning it 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 acts with the limerence you're already feeling when you meet a new person if this is a romantic relationship that that creates this feeling of wow this is my soulmate this is the person i've been waiting for so on and so forth okay often not always but often <laughs> And what happens after that, it doesn't matter if it's a month, a week, or years, the, the devaluation starts. Once a narcissist starts to devalue, the mask is off, they don't usually come back from it. They usually then stay in the cycle. It's not like they have one bout of devaluing and then they recover from it and they're back to being nice. That's not usually what happens. What usually happens is the devaluing starts once the devaluing starts, they no longer keep you up on that pedestal and they're letting you see their true face. They're letting you see the displeased, arrogant, unhappy, um, critical person that they really are. And they project onto you during the devaluing. They gaslight you during the devaluing. They may cheat on you. They may put you down they may knock you off your pedestal in the sense of like no longer giving you gifts or being kind or all of that you know so the devaluing is literally what it sounds like devaluing taking away the value of then the cycle starts then they love bomb for a few days and devalue for a few days or however long it is right that it the thing is it's intermittent it's it's not consistent it is they start a little bit they do a little bit of the love bombing they do a bunch of the devaluing they may love bomb you for an hour by text and then come home and completely stonewall you they may be out to dinner and be life of the party and you get home and you get the silent treatment you don't know what you did so it's hot and cold flip-flop dr jekyll mr ms hyde going on all the time that creates total confusion and cognitive dissonance in your brain because you don't know what's what you start thinking it's you you start thinking that you're the problem or that there's a problem in the relationship or the person's going through something and they just need help the one thing you're not thinking is that's a narcissist and that narcissist is not going to change most of the time that's not what we're thinking we're trying to fix it so while we're trying to fix it our brains start reacting to it what happens is we start getting feeling addicted to this process because what we're looking for is some resolution that everything's okay in our relationship we're looking for ourselves to feel like like we're loved like we're wanted like we're cared about right and the devaluing it becomes almost a challenge it becomes so sad and so heartbreaking and then such relief and such joy in the moments when we get the love bombing it makes us addicted to the pattern it literally creates an addiction for this pattern it creates an extreme need for validation and validation not only that as we're in relationship with people what especially romantic relationships but this can happen with friendships where there's hugs where there's touch where there's fun times together oxytocin bonds oxytocin is released especially in romantic relationships and if there is any 
physical intimacy that's going on, you are being flooded with oxytocin and it can be extreme. It can make that physical intimacy seem way better than it actually is. All right, because you get this huge rush of oxytocin because you've been so depleted and so pulled down in other ways. All of this makes it really hard to walk away. It makes it hard to leave. It makes it hard to stay away. And it makes us feel like we're the ones at fault. Most people who are trauma bonded have what is called cognitive dissonance going on. That is holding two states in your mind at the same time, yes and no, good and bad. It's holding two opposing beliefs at the same time. It is your mind trying to understand the duplicity of what is taking place, not going to be answered through the mind or through the emotions. It's answered through allowing that toxic person to be exactly who they are and seeing the truth of who they are. And by allowing, I don't mean letting them hurt you and letting them, I don't mean letting, I mean acceptance of their truth, allowance of their truth. In fact, to the point where you're like, yeah, you are that. And it's in seeing that that helps you recognize, okay, if I'm not, if I'm seeing that, this is what this person is and how they are. And I'm also thinking, oh, but maybe it could be okay. That might not be accurate. I may need to listen to exactly what it is they're presenting me.